Hi there, it's Fabian speaking and this is a full tutorial for Swist. What is Swist? Swist was first the idea of Natail at a workshop I gave for InDesign scripting and I took this idea and ported it to After Effects. So, still, what does Swist do? Swist creates text in a fixed width for us. He tries to read text files or the bus generator and create for every line in the file or every buzzword, you define a separate text layer and bring them all together in a width that fits your comp. Let's move this panel to the side. Make this smaller over here. We got our font set. I take another one. The text mostly looks better if you set it to all caps. So let's make a comp. It's uh, easier to see what's going on if you got a quadratic comp and you can crop it or change the size later on. So just for the fun of it, hit Swist it. Uh, he's doing some nice stuff. As you can see, he generates a control layer, that's a null, three text lines, they are bound to the null via parenting, and a background to separate it from the um, text you, you created before. He also adds a shadow effect to the text layers, drop shadow effect. Let me remove all that. If we shut off the auto color, we can define our own fill color and of course our own stroke color for our text. So now he will always use the same colors, also for the background, because the background always will try to match the foreground text color. But that's of course not all. The bus gen is just for fun and for checking out fonts, playing with some stylings. If you want to do real work with it, you want to read text. So I've got some text files here and Swist will always try to read every line of this file as a separate text layer for After Effects. Let me show you. I just hit the read text button, select uh, one of these files, I take this one and hit Swist it and there you go. You got your text in a fixed width. So now you could edit the shadow or edit your, uh, add some text animations or something like that or you just play with the colors um, to see how your text looks in different stylings or different fonts. As you can see, there's an extrude checkbox. The extruder creates two comps for you. It creates one comp that contains the text lines and one comp that contains duplicate comps stacked in that space for you to uh, make an extruded text. In this text field, you define the depth of your extrude and of course, if you add a shadow, in this case, he will use an After Effects light and the real After Effects 3D shadow and not the shadow effect. So let me set this down a bit to about uh, 25 and take a different, different font and just hit Swist. There you go, you got your text extruded. Let's have a look inside. Or let's have a look first in the timeline what he created. He created a light, a camera, our background, and also a separator. The separator is just for separating the 3D layers from one another. So if I hit Swiss again, he does the extrude again and all that stuff. And 
the separator, because it's, it's not a 3D layer, separates this bunch of 3D layers from this bunch of 3D layers. The light will affect both. Let me take different color, something not that aggressive, and a different stroke color, light gray. Let's make the text also light gray, a little bit lighter. And read another text file. Let's say we take the Bucky Fuller text and hit Swist it. I don't like the green. Let me change this to something more appealing. And also I activate the accept lights on this background. Oh, that looks better. So let's have a look inside. Here we got our extrude comp. As we defined, we got 25 layers. Right now, on these layers, only on the last layer, the cast shadow options are activated. As you can see in the main comp, here throws kind of uh, a bit flat shadow. Let me bring this a bit to the front. This shadow is a bit flat. If you want a shadow with more depth, like your extrude, um, just activate the cast shadow options on all of them in here. But this will make your comp pretty hard to render. So if you really need this, be aware to just turn it on before you're rendering and not while you're working because as you can see it takes a lot of time. But this shadow got real depth and also you see on the edges of the of the text everything is sh uh, throwing shadow within itself so that's, that looks much nicer normally. I will shut this off for the sake of this tutorial and just activate the cast shadow option on the last one. Let's get one step deeper. Here we got our text comp. Um, you still can do text animations and all that stuff in here, but you are um, bound to the X and Y axis because if I try to rotate text in here, you will see this does not work. Let me undo that. So this is what Swiss creates. Let's have a look what else happens. So you can also get in depth into your settings and define how you should create or handle your comp. You can tell him to not add a camera, not add the background, not add the light. Um, I just leave it like that. It, for this tutorial, it's more useful. You can define a higher extrude depth, but 300 layers is already a lot. Um, this will make it hard to handle if you get higher than that. In the second line, you got the color settings. With the U value, you can define the offset for the background calculation. This is only for the auto color settings. So if you disable the auto color, he won't uh, recognize these values. He will just do as, he, as you tell him. The saturation and lightness values are a bit different. It's not an offset, that's a range. So if I use a saturation value of 10 in here, he only will create text with a range of 10% of the saturation. Oh, sorry. I forgot to activate the auto color option. So you see, this is really desaturated all, everything here. Let me remove that. And so I create our extrude again.
let's get back to the settings. I reset this to 100 and uh, the same thing as with the lightness value, it's also a range uh, of colors he can, he can select. If you set it really low, you only get dark text on a dark background. This is not that useful. You can define the number of bus lines or bus gen lines. In the basic bus generator, there are four lines that you can use and you can tell them to add a separator or not. This should stay on, I think, but it's all up to you. And last, you can define your own bus generator. So when you download the script, there was a file own bus gen in the, in the download. But if you lost it, there's still this here in the help files. Just copy it, make a new text file, paste the, this in here. And this should already work. So let's just save this to our work directory. Name it own bus JSON. Let's try it out, huh? But still, it works. So if I now activate the bus gen and shut off the extrude, you see he reads this bus generator file you created by yourself. So if you're bored of my bus gen, create your own. Or you could hack open the script and look for the bus generator there. This was a full tutorial on Swist. Um, thanks for watching.